Hi guys, Triple B here. We just had the first ever North American budget build battle tournament. If you've never heard of the format before, but have somehow stumbled onto the channel, well, first of all, welcome. And second of all, it's a very unique kind of off meta way to play the game. There's no rule box cards allowed. So that means no EXs, no Vs, no A specs, no Radiance, making it so single prize Pokemon have the chance to shine. The other thing with deck building is you're limited to two copies of a card that have the same name. This applies to special energies, trainer cards, and Pokemon. Pokemon. The exception though, basic Pokemon. If it evolves up into a stage one and it's in your deck, you can have one extra copy of the basic. If it evolves into a stage two that's in your deck, you can have two extra copies of the basic, meaning you can theoretically have a 4-2-2 evolution line or a 4-0-1 evolution line, because as long as the stage two's in there, it unlocks that little bit of like, hey, two extra basics if you want them. So that's pretty sick. Not too sure if anyone's actually done that yet, but the option's definitely there. Item cards that are treated as basic Pokemon, the same rule applies. So fossils, you can have four copies of those. But all that aside, let's get into the top eight of the North American tournament. So in eighth, we are seeing Peterson who played Alolan Raticate. Very interesting take. It has the attack Super Fang for three colorless energy. You can put damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon opponent's active Pokemon until its remaining HP is 10, meaning as long as you have a way just to like get 10 more damage on it, you can apply some pretty scary pressure. And they did, since they have Brute Bonnet. So Brute Bonnet, as long as it has an Ancient Boost Capsule on it, which is in the deck, you can decide to uh, poison your active Pokemon and your opponent's active Pokemon. So Eradicate goes, you have 10 health left, Brute Bonnet goes, you're poisoned, you take 10 damage between turns and I'm getting a KO, which is a little bit terrifying. To pay for the Raticate's attack cost, we do have reversal energy. So when you're behind on prizes, attach that on there. It's an evolution Pokemon. It's gonna count as three energy of any type, including colorless. So as long as you're behind on prizes, good to go. You're a dark type, so you can be using dark patch to attach a dark energy from the discard pile to it while it's on the bench. You also have access to Janine's Secret Art, which lets you choose two of your dark Pokemon in play, search your deck for a basic dark energy and attach it to those. So like two Raticates or two Raditatas, search your deck, one here, one on the other one, dark patch, attach for turn, all of a sudden you're ready to go and start doing some very scary attacks. Respect it. <laughs> for draw power, the deck once running a Lipar, just kind of keeping in, in, uh, no in theme, let's say, with that dark typing. Having the trade ability, discarding a card, drawing into two, so a great way to get your dark energy in the discard pile, and then procking with the dark patch. Other attackers, we've got Surviper, another dark Pokemon you can use with the dark patch and Janine's secret art. Venoshock is going to do a base damage of 60 and 120 more if your opponent's active Pokemon is poisoned, so a great basic Pokemon you can throw down. You can take out pre-evolution Pokemon, even if they're not poisoned, or take out pretty beefy guys, doing 180 into them. Plus, since uh, they're poisoned, between turns they're going to be going up to 190 and putting some significant pressure on them. There is ways to boost up that poison damage though, as we have Perlius Jungle, which makes it so you're going to put two more damage counters on each poisoned non-dark Pokemon. Your opponent's non-dark Pokemon, they're scared. Your guys that are poisoned by Brute Bonnet, they're dark type, so they're just taking the base 10 damage from it. We've also got Petrant in here, which when it's in the active, makes it so that you put five more damage counters on your opponent's poison Pokemon. So we go Brute Bonnet, Petrant, Perlius Jungle. Between turns, they're taking eight. You can be taking out pre-evolutions and putting a lot of pressure into larger targets as well. And the final Pokemon in here being Sableye that has Night Eyes. Your opponent's active Pokemon's asleep for a colorless energy or for a dark, you can use Unseen Claws doing 20 base damage. And if your opponent's active Pokemon's affected by a special condition, 70 more. So effectively 90 damage for one color or one dark energy as long as you have the brute bonnet engine online that's terrifying some other interesting cards they did decide to play was atticus you can use this card only if your opponent's active pokemon's poisoned you're going to shuffle your hand into your deck then draw seven drawing seven cards is very powerful we see professor's research played in most decks trade off on that you have to discard your hand this is saying shuffle it so you're not losing key pieces by using this having things that you want to be hanging on to like tool cards stadiums your evolution pokemon if you don't have the basics out atticus is a great call out and combos amazingly with the brute bonnet arvin allowing you to get into your tool cards gets you that ancient boost capsule or gets you into an evo tm so you go arvin Buddy Buddy Poffin, Evo TM, it works in standard, it works in the budget build battle format as well. Another trainer we haven't seen seeing a lot of play, so interesting take here is Bill's Transfer. You look at the top eight cards of your deck, reveal any number of Pokemon you find there and put them into your hand. So it's a great way just to kind of filter through your deck, get into your key pieces and get online, again, without having to discard any pieces while doing it. 
Janine's we've already covered. Clavel, you get to search your deck for three basic Pokemon with 120 HP or less. Reveal them, put them into your hand. That's going to be getting you into your Petrants, your Sableyes, your Survipers. The Leave Group on it? Yep. Your Ratatatas, your Purloin. So it's basically just, hey, get three basics. This is That's what this card says. We see Erezu seeing a lot of play in decks since it gets you into three evolution pieces and this deck having access to a way to get three basics without any limitations. Yeah, honestly, I love it. And I'm interested to see if this impacts how people do their deck building. Maybe other people will pick up on this card and start putting it into their decks as well, just to kind of help with setup. Most decks though, they're leaning towards things like Buddy Buddy Poffin and Nest Ball. Not seeing any Nest Balls in this build. So I guess it's kind of, hey, my, my Clavel is just three Nest Balls, but it's my supporter for turn. So fair enough. And then Thornton just allowing you to switch a basic Pokemon from your discard pile with one of your basic Pokemon in play. So if you want to get a Brute Bonnet back, or get a Rattata back, you can do that. It keeps any status conditions, anything attached to it still on the Pokemon. So if it's poisoned or if it has a tool or energy attached to it, it swaps out as well as turns in play. So you could use Brute Bonnet with Ancient Boost Capsule, poison your opponent's active Pokemon, then Thornton it, turn it into a Rattata. It's been out for a turn. You can evolve it into Raticate. You can use Super Fang. You can uh, put your opponent down to 10 HP remaining. And then because they're poisoned from your Brute Bonnet effect and you've healed through the poison by evolving up into Raticate, they're dead and you're fine. So yeah, some pretty dirty combos at this deck. Also including Binding Mochi, making it so if your Pokemon is poisoned, they do 40 more damage, making it so your Sableye is a significant threat. Survivor is pretty scary. And I'm not too sure how that would ra work with Raticate. Raticate's in effect. So it puts them down to 10 HP remaining. It's not actually doing damage. It's just putting them down to, you're basically gone. So yeah, Binding Mochi is not gonna fix that. They do need to be poisoned also to kind of get the crazy combo. In seventh place, we are seeing Slowen, who is playing a control deck of sorts. I'll be honest, I'm not a control player, so I'm not going to talk too, too much to this list. There is a lot of cards on the screen right now. That's pretty much what I have to say about control, and a lot of them scare me. Uh, it's got Totodile that has Big Bite doing 10 base damage, and during your opponent's next turn, the defending Pokemon can't retreat. So it's a great way just to lock something in the active and kind of chip away at them. Calming this myth, Mawile, who has Tempting Trap, Colorless Energy, does the same thing, locks your opponent in the active, and then on the following turn, if you hit them, you're going to do 90 more damage. So it's like Mawile, lock it in the active, go into Totodile, hit it for 100 now. Kind of scary. They also have Snorlax with Block. So it, it, it's Block Lax, but in Triple B format, effectively. You're blocking with Blocklax or you're blocking with Totodile or Mawal and just doing control things. So if you're a control player and you've been wanting to try out the budget pill battle format, here's a great starting point for you. I'm not a control player, so I can't really talk too, too much for it. You got Misfortune Sisters to try and mill your opponent's item cards from their deck before they draw into them. You've got Eerie to discard your opponent's item cards before they get to use them, like their rare candies from hand. Erzu gets you evolutions, boss for gust, Arvin to get you items and tool cards, Iono for disruption. You're not really going to be taking prize cards, so your opponent does, and then you're putting them onto a smaller hand size and then just trying to limit what they can do. Erica's invitation as another gust option, letting you look at your opponent's hand, grab a basic Pokemon from there and pop it into the active. Penny making it so you can like tank hits with your block lax, scoop it up, put it back down. Turo effectively doing the same thing and team yells cheer, making it so you can be reoccurring or recurring your state are your supporter cards so like you're using these things palpad can get them back in or you can go team yells cheer get three of them back in palpad back in team yells cheer team yells cheer put three of them back in palpad it back in repeat silene allows you to flip two coins and put um a card on the top of your deck for each heads that you hit so you can be recycling your palpads and just keep that loop kind of going yeah i love to see that controls found its way to the format <laughs> And congrats, Sloan, in making it into the top eight with it. Uh, in sixth place, we've got Chesskeeper who played Frigoraf. So we did see someone play it last night in the Australian version of this tournament, and now it's found its way to the North American version as well. Frigoraf, for two colorless energy, has one Deerful Rumble, which does a multiplier of 40 for each of your stage one Pokemon in play. Frigoraf's going to count for that, so it's always going to be doing a base damage of at least 40, and then you want to fill your bench with as many other stage ones as possible. So two of these in play, 80. DTE to charge, oh, never mind, no DTE to charge it up. They've just gone all in on Psychic, and that's because they've got Zatu. Also a Stage 1 Pokemon, you can attach a Psychic from your hand to one of your bench guys to draw two cards. Rescue Board in here makes it a great option to just chuck this in the active, have Rescue Board on it, you trigger it to Frigoraf, 
gets an attachment, attach for turn, that's ready to start going, because this is a stage one, this is a stage one, you're boosting your damage, not bad. Espathra also seeing play in this deck, Glittering Eyes does a base damage of 70, then if Tulip's in your discard pile, 70 more, so it gets up to 140, and its ability stance allows you to, that when you evolve up into this Pokemon, you can go, I'm not going to take any damage or uh, any effects from attacks till my next turn. So that's kind of crazy. It's, it's basically like evolve into this and you're invincible. That's scary. Uh, two psychic energy to charge it up. So same idea, you're using Zatu to get it online. It is a stage one charging up your fur graphs. And then for some basic secondary attackers, you've got Latio so you can charge up with Zatu to do 180 damage. You do have to discard three energy from this Pokemon when you use it though. So a little bit costly, but hitting a fairly big number can be good to deal with like large stage two Pokemon. Maybe taking out like something like a Backscalibur, boss it up, take it out. You're in a good spot your opponent can accelerate energy out not a bad call and volbeat also in here for the quick sign attack if you go first you can use this attack on the first turn of the game search your deck for two basic pokemon and pop them onto your bench not bad it's effectively buddy buddy pop them but not limited to the amount of hp that the pokemon has so it can be getting into your giraffe rig since they have 100 health it can be getting into your latios if you wanted and everything else like flittle and natu they've got enough hp that Buddy Buddy Poppin will target them, but Triggerafts, you need to get them with either Volpeats, Ultra Balls, or Nest Balls. The rest of the deck, I feel like it's pretty straightforward stuff. You've got Research, Iono, they're your draw power, Boss for Gust, Tulip, a great way to be able to recur Pokemon, letting you get a combination of four basic Psychic Energy or Psychic Pokemon from your discard pile. So you can get those energy for Natu to reattach, or you can get your Triggerafts back from the discard pile and be in a very powerful position. Night Stretcher also allowing you to get Pokemon or Energy back from your discard pile, just making sure you always have your key pieces when you need them, and Energy Retrieval allowing you to grab two Psychic Energy from the discard pile immediately into your hand so that you can reoccur them back onto the board. I like this list. It's intimidating, it looks like it would set up very fast, and shouldn't have any issue resetting attackers as they go down, as long as you have a basic on your bench that can evolve back up. So only feedback I'd have, the Flittle and the Frigraph, or Giraffe Rig, maybe have one extra of them. Since you do have the stage ones, you can have three copies of the basics, but cutting things out, it would get a little bit tight because it's like, oh, are you cutting your Pokey Gears? You don't have that many supporters, so you kind of want that extra dig power, but just finding a little bit of space for one more of each of these wouldn't be a bad call. Maybe the Earthen Vessel, since you do have such a high count of Psychic Energy, you could probably go down to like one of these, one of these, one Night Stretcher. I didn't play the deck though, so I can't give 100% feedback. That's just kind of the call outs that I'm noticing. Might just help just for setting up your board state a little quicker. In fifth place, we are seeing King Carp who piloted Marowak. I love this format. <laughs> You're never going to see Marowak make it to top eight in a tournament in standard, but in this format, yeah, absolutely. Any deck has potential as long as you take the time to refine the list do proper deck building, and find the great combo pieces to make it work. Marowak has the attack Bone Throw, 30 damage for one fighting energy, 30 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Can be great to take baby Pokemon off the board, getting easy prizes, and setting up KOs. The second attack on here doing 120 damage, boundless power. During the next turn though, this Pokemon can't attack, so you need to be able to like switch it out of the active and pivot it back in. The nice thing about Marowak though, these numbers, we can boost them up. So you've got Grant, Play it from hand, your fighting Pokemon do 30 more damage to the opponent's active during this turn. Sick, you can get it back from the discard pile by discarding two cards from your hand to be able to recur that damage to boost you up. And you've also got Cubone, whose Cheering Bone ability makes it so your Marowak's attacks do 30 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon, before applying Weakness and Resistance. So, game plan being, you have three Cubone in play, you evolve one of them up into Marowak, your Marowak's going to be doing 60 extra damage because of the Cubone, means you're doing Bone Throw for 1 energy, 90 to the active, 30 to something on the bench, or Boundless Power, 180 to something in the active, and you have the potential to boost it up further with Grant, right? Like, you could do 210 with Boundless Power or 120 with Bone Throw. That's terrifying. To get even more damage out, though, of course, they ran it with Dusclops, who can knock itself out, put 5 damage counters onto one of your opponent's Pokemon, or going all the way to Dust Noir to put out 13, which could take out something like take a Bibberol off your opponent's bench. You give up a knockout, but you're taking out their draw engine and taking a prize. Seems pretty good. These are also just going to help you get to those breakpoint numbers, right? So you put 5 damage counters on something that has like 70 or 80 HP on your opponent's bench. Marowak then uses Bone Throw to deal with it. 
nice. <laughs> Tatsugiri in here for its attract customer's ability, helping you get into supporter cards, a 1-1 one, one bib roll line for some draw power. Iron Bundle is just for its hyper blower ability, which allows you to swap out your opponent's active Pokemon and makes them choose a new guy from the bench that just goes like, yeah, get that out of the active, put something else up, I'm going to hit it instead. So like if you're doing some chip damage with boundless power, 120 to something, maybe it has 150 HP, you only need to do 30 more to it. Cool. Hyper Blower, get it on the bench, Bone Throw, take it out off the bench. And you're softening something else up or potentially knocking it out if they just have low HP Pokemon that they can bring into the active. And it's like, I have Cubones in play, I have Grant, I'm doing 120 with Bone Throw and taking that thing off your bench. Neat. I uh, got to play in the top eight against King Carp and honestly seeing this deck in motion, loved it. Such a cool concept and very keen to kind of see this list get refined and what other decks King Carp's going to cook up in the future. Rest of the deck though, I feel like it's pretty standard stuff we've already gone over. Draw power, they did include Roxanne, which we haven't seen yet tonight. Uh, and Judge making you shuffle yours and your opponent's hand into the deck and then drawing it to four. Pokemon League HQ, making it so your opponent's basic Pokemon, or not your opponent's, basic Pokemon in play have to pay one more colorless energy to attack. You're never attacking with colorless or with basic Pokemon, so you don't have to worry. And it does make decks like Okie Doge and Ancient Box struggle a little bit since they need to have a counter stadium to get around this or find ways to accelerate extra energy onto themselves. Definitely a bit of disruption there. Some tech cards, Lost Vacuum and Canceling Clone, so you could like gust up a Manaphy into the active, Canceling Clone it, knock it out and put chip damage onto something on the bench. Like it? Yeah, honestly keen. A very cool deck. <laughs> in fourth place, we're yeah, it's me. <laughs> so I played the same deck list last night in Australia and played it this afternoon for the North American one. Well, Friday night for North America, Saturday afternoon for me. Uh, Dragapult has the Dragon Launcher attack. You can choose any number of your Dreepy on the bench, discard them, and then you're going to do 100 damage to your opponent's Pokemon for each one of those. So it's like ditch three Dreepy, pick three of your opponent's Pokemon, go 100, 100, 100. Sick. You have Dra the second attack spooky shot to deal with something in the active if you don't have Dreepies to discard or if you just want to hit the active you can target the active as well. And then it's going to evolve from Dracloak. Stage 1, the Recon Directive ability, great way to add draw power into the deck. You get to look at the top two cards of your deck, put one in your hand, one on the bottom. It's good. You don't have to discard anything, it's just like, hey, pick one of these things. Which one would you like to have? Yeah, you're in a good spot. Frostlass in here for its Freezing Shroud ability, helping you put damage counters out, just softening targets up for Dragapult to Spear. Prime example, if your opponent has a Bibarel on their bench, I can put 100 damage on it with Dragapult. One Frostlass in play means as it goes to the opponent, they take 10, they go to 110. If they don't get that off their bench somehow, comes back to me, they get knocked out. Or with two Frostlass, as it goes to their turn, they get knocked out. Also puts a lot of pressure into opponents that have multiple abilities in play, like Tatsugiri's, the Cubones we just saw in that previous deck. Yeah, it, it's it's a pretty crazy card for this format. Monkey Dory also making a great partner for Frostlass. We have Dark Energy, so Monkey Dory is going to be taking damage counters from Frostlass. Dracloak's going to be taking damage counters from Frostlass. Dark Energy on here, we can move three counters onto something else. It's nice, especially if the opponent's playing something like Manaphy, who's going to be protecting their bench. That means I can move three damage counters off this onto a Manaphy, two Frostlass in play, between turns, takes 20, comes back, they take another 20, it's knocked out, Dragapult can go, okay, 100, 100, 100. That's four prizes right there. Love it. <laughs> Zatu's in here just for a little bit of draw power and as a way to charge up attackers. Its clairvoyant sense allows you to attach a basic psychic energy from your hand to one of your bench Pokemon, meaning we can even be attacking with Monkey Dory. So we get an energy onto there. We get to draw two cards after using Zatu's ability as well. Pays for the psychic energy, attach a dark energy for turn. We can use Mind Bend, confusing the active Pokemon while doing 60 to them making it so they have to find a way to either evolve through the status condition, flip a coin or take 30 damage, or try and find ways to pivot it to the bench and back into the active if they want to attack again with it. It's pretty sick. Also having Gengar in here as another attacker we can quickly get online, having Netherworld Gate. If this is in the discard pile, I can bring it back from the discard onto my bench. It's going to take three damage counters when we do it, which means Monkey Dory can move that damage onto our opponent's Pokemon. It's nice. And the Screaming Circle attack costing just one Psychic Energy and putting two damage counters on your opponent's active Pokemon for each of their bench Pokemon. So if they have a full bench of five, we can be doing 100 damage for just one Psychic Energy. It's definitely a great attacker to have. And when you aren't really in a great spot to be setting up, like if you don't have a Zatu to charge up Monkey Dories, or if you don't have Dragapults online, like no Dreepies on your bench, it's like, well, I'll just 
slot something in the active, have Rescue Board on it. I can bring Gengar back from the discard pile whenever I want, attach a Psychic Energy, and we're, we're back online again. It just allows you to keep constant pressure into your opponent. For the trainer cards, most of these we've seen before. Erezu helping you get into your evolution pieces. Arita allowing you to get your water Pokemon, being the Snowrunt Frostlass line and an item card. So it can be great to get Buddy Buddy Poffin and your Frostlass, getting Dreepies online or just getting the Snowruns to then evolve up on the following turn. Arvin to get into your Buddy Buddy Poffin Evo TM play or into Devolution TM as well. So Frostlass could be putting damage counters onto things on the bench that have abilities and their pre-evolutions have less health. And we just go, okay, make them smaller. Yeah, it's a little bit dirty. I like it. <laughs> also having a copy of Lost City in here. So when we do deal with Manaphy, we can make sure that it's never coming back. We knock it out, it goes to the Lost Zone. They're never going to have bench protection again. And Dragapult's just going to run amok. Dragapult's discarding Dreepies from play that are not getting knocked out. So we don't have to worry about them going in the discard pile. All right, in the Lost Zone, it's a yeah, really solid card to include in the list. And Canceling Clone. So we also have the ability to just gust Manaphy in the active, spritz it with a little bit of this, and then start attacking their bench. In third place, we are seeing 585 who piloted Hisuian Arcanine, also having a Frostlass line in here and making it so that Arcanine can do some pretty dirty numbers. Does 30 base damage for no energy by using Proud Fangs, and if your bench Pokemon have any damage counters on them, 90 more. So you can effectively do 120 damage for no energy at all, which is really nice. Frostlass putting out damage counters, helping to soften up your opponent's uh, Pokemon so that Arcanine can finish them off or potentially just between turns take out small HP things. Dodrio being a secondary attacker in here, we do have some energy to pay the attack cost for Ballistic Beak, which does 10 damage and 30 more damage for each damage counter on this. It has an ability, so Frostass is going to be hurting it, making it stronger between turns. The ability also allows you to put one damage counter on it and draw a card, so it's a great way to make sure our canines able to get additional damage out without having to wait for Frostlass to put damage counters on things between turns. It's just like, ball of into Dodrio, proc this ability, our canine attack sick it's kind of like a duck hunt deck it feels like you got your big pup you got the crazy ducks you you just go ham <laughs> monkey dory also showing up in this list and having an okie dogie as well with adrena power as long as you have a dark energy on this it's getting 100 extra health and doing 100 extra damage we have dark energy we have fighting energy we have luminous energy so a luminous energy and a fighting energy would pay the attack cost and also get the ability online so yeah definitely an interesting inclusion isn't really any ways to accelerate energy out to the Ogi Dogi, but as our canine doesn't need any energy to attack, it's like, hey, my attacker doesn't need energy, I can be setting up guys on the bench to be threats. Also, since we do have Luminous Energy, you could be going Luminous Energy on the Monkey Dory to pay for the Dark Energy for Adrena Brain, as well as the Psychic Energy for the attack. So attaching a Dark or a Fighting Energy to this, you can be confusing the opponent's active Pokemon and putting some damage into them as well. Supporters in here though, Pretty standard trainer line for the most part, having trekking shoes just to help you dig through the deck a little bit faster. Damage pumps, so you can be moving counters off your like monkey dories or okie dogies onto your dodrios and doing extra damage, or potentially off your dodrio so it doesn't get knocked out by frost last between turns. And then yeah, I feel like the rest it's, it's stuff we've kind of already talked about. In second place, we're seeing Koala, who is also playing an RK9 list. So RK9 showing up. Frostlash showing up a little bit different here though. We've still got Monkey Dory, but having Eveltal for the corrosive winds attack, you put two damage counters on each of your opponent's Pokemon that has any damage counters on it. So Frostlash is putting counters on their board and then Eveltal is like two more. And then between turns, they take more from Frostlash and then Eveltal goes and, and two more. It's scary, it, it's scary. So they have a way to do spread damage and they have a way to hit the active really hard. I respect it. Honestly, I love this list. Uh, something a little interesting though, or at least that I think is a little interesting, they don't have a way to immediately get damage counters on their own board. So to get the effect of our canine, they've got to have Frostlass set up and they've got to wait for between turns to damage the Monkey Dory. It's the only Pokemon in the deck that has an ability. Everything else doesn't have one and Frostlass isn't putting damage counters on itself. So getting that our canine online could be a little bit tricky is kind of like the main call out I'm seeing here, maybe including something like a Gape Jaw Bog, just so you can put that in play. When you bench stuff, they come in with two damage counters on, our canines online might be worth experimenting with, but yeah, interesting concept. And Koala making it into second place, obviously found ways to make it work. So maybe I'm missing something here. And also having the Kleffa baby Pokemon. So it's got 30 HP, free retreat and a free attack. It's gonna allow you to draw seven cards. 
yeah, not too bad. If you're going second, just having this as a way to refill your hand, it's definitely great. Uh, in the budget build format, being limited to two copies of a card means you're not always going to have a supporter for turn on the second turn. Like you're not guaranteed to have that Arvin or a researcher, I don't know. So having access to Cleffa, who it's like, a, you can go nest ball, get into this, maybe attach an energy to something with one retreat, hard retreat it into Cleffa, refill your hand. It's definitely a good call out. And getting first place is Popstar, who is playing Unpheasant Archeops control, kind of? Like it takes it takes prizes. So I don't know that I want to call it control. It's Yeah, he's cooked something up here. He has definitely cooked something up here. <laughs> I can't talk too too much to it. I feel like I have enough of an understanding of the deck though, but yeah, it's like kind of going for a control concept, but also like an aggressive one. So Unpheasant's attack, opposing wins, two colorless energy, 70 damage. You get to put two energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon into their hand. So if your opponent doesn't have great ways to accelerate energy and has been slowly manually charging something up, like that Okie Dogie we saw in that previous uh, Arcanine list, where it's just like, oh yeah, attach for turn, attach for turn, eventually it gets online. Unpheasant just goes, no, bounce that back. Nice. It's also resistant to that Okie Dogie. He would be doing 170, but into this he'd be doing 140. So you're just surviving a hit and then you bounce the energy. It'd be a very uh, unfortunate interaction to see. <laughs> the second attack on here, Boundless Power, does a flat 180, but during your next turn, this Pokemon can't attack. Having free retreat though, you can easily pivot into another attacker to get online. You can then switch it back into the active. Maybe not actually. It doesn't look like they had any switch in this deck. So the idea I guess would just be have two Unpheasant in play, loop into them or switch into another attacker like Bufalint who has a lost headbutt doing 50 base damage and you put an energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon into the loss zone. So eventually, as long as you're getting enough hits off with Bufalint, your opponent won't have any energy to play with. If they've pried some and then you're lost zoning some, they may get to a point where they just can't declare attacks anymore. Having Crushing Hammer also, so it's like you Crushing Hammer away an energy off something, you Lost Zone away another energy, it has nothing left. That's dirty. <laughs> Second attack on here though, Super Powered Horns doing 120 damage for four colorless energy. Definitely a great way just to take like some quick knockouts if you need in a pinch. A little bit costly to get it charged up, but to get special energy out, you are running Archeop, so you could get two DTEs, use that. You'd only be doing 80 damage though, so probably not the play. If you have two Archeops though, you could accelerate four energy to it to do the flat 120. I feel like they're mostly focusing on the first attack though, Lost Headbutt, just to be able to kind of remove resources from the game. So it's like, hey, I'm not doing massive numbers into you, but you're not gonna have energy. Like eventually when this thing's KO'd, you're, you're, you're not gonna have any energy left in your deck. <laughs> so yeah, a little intimidating. Archop's also a great way to charge up the Unpheasant as it needs three energy. You can be getting reversals from the deck. You could go DTE and another energy onto it and get going. You can also be charging up Snorlax, who has Unfazed Fat. So you prevent all effects of attacks done to this Pokemon, which is pretty good. And Thumping Snore doing 180 base damage on a basic isn't anything to be lost over. This Pokemon's gonna fall asleep though, and during checkup, you have to flip two coins instead of one. So if you use this attack and you don't have a way to wake it back up, you're going to be having a bad time. There is a special energy though, therapeutic energy. As long as this is attached to a Pokemon, it's a colorless energy, and the Pokemon this is attached to recovers from sleep, confusion, or paralysis, and can't be affected by those special conditions. So you attach that and a DTE, or that and another energy with uh, Archops, and then another one from hand for turn. You can do 180 damage, and you just sit there and keep declaring 180 into them. It's a basic Pokemon, so it's really quick to set up. Yep, that's a pretty scary wall. <laughs> the other cards in the deck, we're seeing Arvin, Boss's Orders, Iono, Eerie showing up. Frustrating card when you see your opponent playing it, especially if you're dependent on something like Rare Candy or have been holding onto a Super Rod to be able to get some energy back from the discard pile into your deck so you can find it. It's like, well, this is going to get knocked out. I'll just Super Rod these things back. And then they go Eerie and you go, well, I guess I'm not doing that then. So yeah, that's... Fun card, good card when it's in your deck. <laughs> when it's in your opponents, oh, it's frustrating. Uh, Air Zoo to get the evolution pieces out and Roseanne's backup, just allowing you to recur the special energy since it gets an energy from your discard pile back into your deck, a stadium, a tool, and a Pokemon. So you can be getting Academy at night back. You can be getting a handheld fan, which we haven't even talked about yet. So Bufflint will be lost owning an energy. And then if they hit you, you're going to move an energy from them onto one of their bench Pokemon, so you put it onto something that's never going to attack. 
yeah, this is a very disruptive deck, but I like it because it takes prizes. So like, honestly, Popstar, if you're watching this, like, I'm kind of terrified of this <laughs> and respect the heck out of you for building it. Uh, but yeah, I feel like the rest of the deck kind of speaks for itself. Academy at Night being a great new stadium coming out of Shrouded Fable allows you to put a card from your hand on top of your deck. So if you're worried about your opponent Ionoing you, you just put a draw supporter on top, right? They've got Iono themselves, they've got Yuri, so it's just like, hey, I want to like hang on to resources. So maybe saying draw supporter wasn't the best choice of words for this deck, because they don't have a lot of draw supporters, mostly reliant on Bibril, but just knowing like, well, I have an Archon, I've got the Archie Ops in hand, I want to evolve up into it next turn, I'm just going to Academy at night, put it on top of my deck. If I get hit with Iono, I still have my Archie Ops and I'm in a good spot. So like stuff like that, you can kind of play around with it. Did play against Popstar twice in tonight's tournament. And yeah, whenever this card came down, I was kind of using it as a Iono counter. I was just like, well, I'm going to put my Professor's Research on top of my deck. It's like worst case scenario, I, I know I have it if I need it. Or before using Research, if there's pieces I didn't want to discard, like I had a Dragapult in hand at one point, I was like, well, I'm just going to put that on top of my deck, play Research. I get back into the Dragapult, I don't have to worry about getting it back into the deck. So yeah, really interesting stadium and interested to see what other decks start implementing it. But that's it for the top eight of tonight's tournament. I hope you guys kind of liked this breakdown. And if you're keen to try out the budget build format for yourself, check the description of the video because there'll be a link to my tournament page. There's one that's going to be hosted in Australia every Friday night for them and one that's going to be hosted for North America every Friday night going forward. So there should be a time zone for you. Hope you guys enjoyed this and would love to hear what decks you're considering cooking up for the next tournament. But till next time, stay golden, you Goombas.